Hi, this will be a lesson on a Mississippi John Hurt song. This one's Spike Driver Blues, and it's in the key of G in standard tuning. I'll go through the song once in the style that he plays it in, and then get into the lesson. This song will be broken up is into sections, the A section, B section, C section, and the A2 section. And then you can see those sections in the sheet music in the tablature if you view it. Which, if you're on YouTube, you can check the description block box and there's a play along where you can follow along. But I thought with this, it's good to go through each in one in these cells. So the cell being each section, the A, the B, the C, the A2. And so starting with the A, the first A section, that cell goes like this. is something that is repeatable. You can loop it over and over and that looping part is is good for kind of training it into your fingers and from there what you can tell is that the alternating bass is on the sixth and fourth strings on the third fret of the bottom string and the open fourth string. So personally I just rest my pinky on the pick guard try and push through so that the thumb goes to the next string down. That helps you get a pretty big sound. Now, on the treble side, It's only involving really four notes. Now continuously you'll be holding down this this G chord with them with your ring finger there. But on the treble side you can hit this third fret of the second string. So as the first part of this A section loop, I would just try and hit this alternating bass and get comfortable with planting down that third fret of the second string and just feeling free between the open top string and the third fret of the second string. For example, you can go all of them at the same time. on the bass notes and you can hit them off the bass notes covers all of the different variations that you can play. If you can play them in between and off of, then 
you're pretty much good and from there you can kind of mix it up. Now when you're plucking with your plucking hand, what I find is actually pretty good for getting a bigger volume out of the instrument and also having a little bit more bounce in your facility in the plucking hand is to actually use this first digit and almost kind of you almost use it as like a you must straighten out that digit so that it flexes your your digit forward as it comes down on the string. You just flex it forward and let it pop through the string into the adjacent. Because a lot of times, at least before, I used to curl my fingers around like this. But if you flatten the digit, your finger digits, at least the final digits, then you can almost press through the string. And it pops through. And it doesn't have to be that hard. Then you can start doing it a little light. And then you'll notice, well I notice that it kind of tends to create a bigger sound. cell is to try with your pointer finger, with your fretting hand to flatten those digits out. And that's actually also formally called a rest stroke. You rest into the next string. Hitting into the string, hitting into the A string, resting into the B string, resting into the A string. So now for this A section cell you've got rest strokes on your right hand, on your plucking hand, and then on the left hand all you're doing is a static shape so far. Excuse me, just looping this. Okay. Now throughout this, you should be aware that it's a G. The entire song is in the key of G, so it's good to be mindful as you're working through these cells of knowing what your notes are to work with. And the simplest that everyone, simplest kind of model is probably the pentatonic scale. So what you've got is, for the G major pentatonic scale, you've got third fret of the top string, open, third fret of the second string, open, second fret of the third string, open, second fret of the fourth string, open, second fret of the fifth string, open, third fret of the bottom string, and open. It's also the E minor pentatonic. But if you hit it over a G chord, it's just the major version. So actually, so far in this cell, it's all within that G major pentatonic scale which is why it sounds so consonant and nice together so far. It also means that for the cell, you can start adding in other notes if you wanted. Before moving,
moving to the next cell of the song, I'll just also mention that in being free, you can hit it on the beat and then also hit it off the beat. And then you can do a pickup. You can do this. This note kind of sets up the next note. Which is really useful all the time. It's almost like you snap it and then you hit the... So it comes right before you hit and then it's a pinch. So I also get used to hitting these pickups. And to get that snappiness, then I, I would suggest also emphasizing the flattened out so that you can snap into the rest stroke and then hit the notes. gotten so much mileage out of even just this first bar or two of the song, it'll feel pretty comfortable to play and you might even feel a little freer over it. Now moving on to the next little bit, that's where you add in the third fret of the top string. First fret of the top string. And what I find with the left hand is if I kind of have my thumb this sort of joint, sort of on the upper edge, it tends to kind of make for a hand shape where I can just keep the G chord here and all the notes that you need in this song, you just rotate your elbow back and forth like this. I don't know if you can see that, but it, if you bring it here, it's the G7 dominant. If you go here, you get the G major. So, for this part, for the cell that you were just working on, your elbow is shifted out here because you're hitting the G major. And then if you go up to the third fret, you're still in this kind of general ergonomic shape. For the cell, that's the cell that you were working on before, then the next one is like this. I was kind of maybe overemphasizing the elbow shifting, but... Now you've still got the alternating bass on this kind of continuation of the cell third fret of the bottom, fourth string open. Now remember, G major pentatonic. Those are some notes that will work. But you're also now going to add in the dominant. First fret of the top string. And same thing, now you create a cell that you can loop over and over to infinity and do it until you feel comfortable with the notes that you're working with and that you feel that you can displace the notes however you want. So it's only two notes again. Third fret of the top string, first fret. So now try again on the beat. Try 
by a combination. Now, try some pickups. You can use the second string for your pickup. Remember, the pickup's almost just like a trampoline launching point. And then this second string open is part of the G major sort of note family according to the pentatonic sort of model. So you can use that as a pickup and it'll sound good. And it's nice because it's easy. You could also use other notes as the pickup, but then it becomes a little more difficult to play. So now try that in your loop. And try and keep that pickup note tight. this. Remember that part? And now you can kind of displace the notes around. On the beat, off the beat with pickups. it out of now that that's the one cell that's the a section cell and now it's moving into the b section cell which goes a little more like this but you've got the a cell you've got the b cell now you've just got to link the two together so you got this And then this is how you link it up. This is the sequence of notes to link it up if you don't want to just play this loop forever. It's that. And then you're into the second cell. So first, I'll go through the basics of the second cell. Alternating bass now with the third fret of the bottom string, second fret of the fourth string. And you can just kind of sprinkle in other notes from this G major pentatonic. For example, just the open string. Now that's if it's off the beat. Remember, you can just link this or sorry, loop this uh, ad infinitum. And you get kind of cool sounds like this. Now then you can do it on a different string. can have these really sort of kind of elaborate sort of results. So that's your second cell. And again, you can even do pickups off those open strings. Just using almost random notes from this. 
pentatonic scale and then just seeing what you like. So now you've got this first cell, the A cell, and now this B cell. So the A cell. have to kind of link the two together and that's that is this lick it's the top string sweep up on the third fret of the top string and then hit the bottom string open third fret of the third string Pinch the fourth and second strings open. So three steps. You've got the top string, sweep, bottom string, hit. Or four steps. Third fret of the third string. And then pinch the second and fourth. And then fifth, fourth, third string open. Five steps, and then you're into the second loop, and you can just do this forever. All right, so you got. Now, you kind of get into the C section, which is actually kind of similar to the A section, where it goes... That's the C section, and it, you could almost call it like an A2 where, and then now the current A2 would be A3, but it w it'll be called the C section just, just cuz. And so... It's, it's, now I gotta remember... Yeah. It starts, the C, C section starts with a bit of a riff on the on the bass side. It's again just using the notes. These notes. Third string bottom, fourth string open, second fret of the fifth string, and back to the fourth string. So even that you can just loop until you feel comfortable. section here's another kind of thing that you can start looping it's very similar to the A section loop except now you're using the first fret of the top string third fret of the second string and toggling between that and the open top string and landing back into the first fret Now, when you're doing this loop, just use the normal alternating bass without that bass riff. Just the normal alternating bass. Now, 
you'll notice that this automatically has combinations of being off the beat or on the beat. So if you're starting to get comfortable with just some that are off the beat, some that are on the beat. So it starts with off the beat. It's in between the bass notes. Meaning a bass note isn't played at the moment that the treble note is played. And then some are on the beat. into your fingers then you want to loop the hell out of it so that it just stays in your fingers. C loop is really similar to what was just played. Same rhythm except just slightly different notes. You've got the third fret of the top string, so you can sweep up on that. Second, third fret of the second string, and you'll toggle between that and the open top string. C section loop now. Now same thing, you'll just want to play that forever and ever so that you've got that now comfortable in your fingertips and then you will do the same thing as you did for the loops for the cells A and B where you start playing slight variations of it just to kind of stretch your comfort zone so you got he does stuff like this treble part. All he does is play the bass riff, but he does these simple picking patterns that make it sound very elaborate. So in that case, he adds in the open third string. Or you can change. 
change the note. So these are all the different ways that you can kind of displace the notes, stretch them. Uh. And they're all kind of like little variables that you can sort of move around and each time the chorus will sound different. And I think practicing them as cells where you kind of know each little section and all the kind of like potential of each one is pretty helpful. So now you got three cells now, A, B, and C. This is A. Now you connect it with cell B. This is cell B. And that was the transition. When you're still in cell B, remember with this alternating bass, it'll be open third string, open second string, off the beat. Then you actually hit a odd note, good note. It's the third note of the third fret of the third string. And then from there it'll be a pinch between the fourth and second strings. It's just, uh, the only cell left is A2. Uh. And A2 is pretty much just, the reason why it's A2 is that it's pretty much just the the same as A, it's just in the in the G G chord, where you've got the alternating bass on the fourth on the fourth string open and the sixth string third fret. And it's the same thing, you're kind of playing around with these notes. thinking of it this way because you'll notice that if you're still watching this that there is a play along set of tablature where Mississippi John Hur has been transcribed based on his Today album and I tried to transcribe every single thing in more detail than he plays because a lot of times it's just taught like this just a very straightforward. It's just very bare bones. Every single chorus sounds very structured and the same. Whereas the interesting thing, and I think this is part of why if you listen to Mississippi John Hurt, it's different from if you listen to other people uh, like me or, you know, people who aren't Mississippi John Hurt with that, who were the ones who actually, he was the one who actually came up with it. And he's actually the one who always strays the most from the main structure. <laughs> You know, those little 
changes or sometimes only alternating, alternating bass. He'll actually just stay on the alternating bass on the, on the D string instead of go back to the 6 string. Like, there are all these different sort of ways that he'll vary it. And that's sort of kind of what feels as if it gives it sort of its more unique sort of nice quality. And I think by practicing it in these cells where you just learn the cells where you can get so comfortable with them that you can sort of improvise like he does over them and then just figure out the transitions between them. Then you can really start to almost like jam with yourself over this and then start to really get it sunken into your fingertips. But even those little transitions like from A to B, there's a lot and then B to C. That in itself is really cool because he's bending the minor third into the major. So this is the major. This note makes it major. The G major. And this note makes it minor. So when he goes like this, that little, there's a lot of stuff that you can grab from that. So that's sort of uh, another look at Spike Driver Blues. So thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.